In the heart of 19th century England, amidst the swirl of romantic fervor, there existed a luminary whose canvases transcended the ordinary. John Martin, a maestro of grandiosity, whose paintings unfolded realms both fantastical and divine. Born with the brush in his hand and dreams in his eyes, Martin emerged as a beacon of the Romantic era. His melodramatic depictions of religious subjects and fantastical compositions turned the ordinary into the extraordinary. Miniature figures traversed his canvases, dwarfed by landscapes that stretched into the sublime, a testament to his penchant for the monumental. Martin's art became a symphony of grandeur that resonated with the masses. In 1821, Lawrence hailed him as the most famous painter of his age. His paintings, with their awe-inspiring scale and theatrical flair, captivated audiences, yet they faced the crucible of criticism. Ruskin and others dissected his work, challenging its excesses, but Martin remained undeterred, an artistic titan against the tide. Popular acclaim did not elude him, and his influence rippled across the Atlantic. Thomas Cole, founder of American landscape painting, was a disciple of Martin's majestic visions. The echoes of Martin's brush reached beyond the canvas, captivating minds like Ralph Waldo Emerson and the Bronte sisters. In the parlors of Haworth, a print of Belshazzar's feast adorned the walls, casting its spell on the imaginative play of the young Brontes, who wove tales amidst Martin's miniature world. The fantastical architecture that adorned Martin's canvases seeped into the fictional realms of Bronte's early works, Glasstown and Angria, where he himself assumed the guise of Edward Delisle of Verdopolis. A reputation solidified, Martin's influence stretched across Europe. Heinrich Heine, in Awe of Hector Berlioz's music, wrote of visions evoked by Martin's paintings, of fabulous empires and wonders shrouded in clouds. The ripple effect of Martin's art extended to the pre-Raphaelites, leaving an indelible mark on Rossetti and inspiring generations of filmmakers, from D.W. Griffith to Cecil B. DeMille, and George Lucas. The ink of authors like Ryder Haggard, Jules Verne, and H.G. Wells absorbed the essence of Martin's sublime concept. As Victorian railway architecture mimicked his themes, including Brunel's Clifton Suspension Bridge, Martin's visionary engineering plans for London, unrealized during his lifetime, found realization years later. The irony echoed in his declaration to his son Leopold that he would have preferred engineering over painting. Yet, as the tides of taste shifted, Martin, like many artistic titans, succumbed to the whims of fashion. His grandiose visions seemed theatrical to the average Victorian, and with his passing, the curtains fell on his once-celebrated oeuvre. Neglected, forgotten, but not erased, his legacy endured, waiting to be rediscovered by those who would appreciate the magnitude of his art. And so, in the ebb and flow of artistic acclaim, John Martin's canvases rested, silent witnesses to a bygone era, a testament to a painter whose grandiosity defied the limits of his time. <laughs>